Hi guys, my name is Michelle Wang and let me tell you a little bit about myself. I currently live in San Diego and I have two cats and one dog. My dog is named Riley and she is a purebred Siberian Husky and I got her four years ago. Her birthday is in January 2016. When I first got her, I realized really quickly that I wanted a dog that would listen to me all the time and in any environment. When I first started training her, I was using a lot of treats, especially when trying to get her into a heel. I would feed her a treat constantly when she was in the right position, and after a while, I just felt like there must be a better way because I was burning through treats, I was buying so many treats, and I didn't want to have to rely on food constantly throughout training because I wanted to eventually phase it out and rely solely on verbal reinforcement. Around the six month mark, I came across a video for healing, and I was really impressed with it and became introduced to the e collar tool. Prior to this, I had never heard about it, and after I did some research on the tool, I realized that not only would it be fantastic for proofing off leash, but it would also be a well rounded tool for almost everything else. Because of that, I purchased an ET400 off the ecollar.com website and I took a four lesson package with a woman in New Jersey. These were in-person lessons and at the time I was only taught obedience commands during these lessons. I was only taught how to teach sit, down, and come with the assistance of the e-collar. But after those four lessons, I realized that I would constantly have questions as to how to properly use the tool. I do not feel like these lessons gave me a good idea at all as to how the e-collar should be used to approach every different situation and how to proof your commands as well. Because anytime I asked her a question about it, she would just tell me to tap the e-collar, but she wouldn't tell me what numbers and why. I feel like for a tool like this, it is really, really important to understand the logic behind it and to understand that in the beginning, we're using a lot of low level stimulation to communicate with your dog, to get them to understand and to help them pay attention to training. So after I had these lessons, it was still a couple of months and I realized I was struggling with her still. Our relationship was not going well. I was having anger problems with myself because anytime she wouldn't listen to me or anytime she wasn't trying to be that perfect dog for me, I would get angry at her. And this was a problem that I needed to improve on myself. Eventually, in January of 2017, I contacted a trainer in San Diego and I did virtual training with her where it was four lessons for an hour each and it was sort of like a revamp. We spent the first week not using the e-collar whatsoever. I'd say it took us a fair amount of time, a couple months before we started to reach a much more positive relationship and then after that, I have to say, I can't remember how things fell into place. But after I purchased that lesson plan, I spent a lot of time watching videos from trainers. I started participating in question and answer sessions with these trainers because I would have my own situations that I wanted to bring forth to them and get their advice. I did some Skype sessions and some of them were free, offered by trainers, or I also paid for sessions. And I just spent a lot of time reading content on their social media to get a better idea for the approach to this type of balanced dog training. So now I feel like I have, for a while now, reached a really, really good balance with Riley. She definitely knows what's expected of her. And every single day we practice our routine in a way as if I've always been doing it. After you practice repetition and making sure that you never cut corners, things really start to fall into place. When I was first interested in getting a Husky, all of my research online led to me believing that they would not coexist well with cats because of their high prey drive. At first, I was considering adopting an adult dog, but most of those candidates had descriptions that said that they would not do well with cats in the house. So I gave up on that and decided to try a puppy. That way they could grow up with a cat and I could teach them to live well with them and not do any sort of inappropriate behavior with them. With the assistance of the e-collar, 
I feel like it created a fantastic environment for both my cats and my dog because they're able to coexist so well together. They stand around each other like it's no big deal. There have even been times where they are laying on the couch together, all watching a movie with me. I am here to reassure you that Huskies can totally do fine with cats. I will probably do another video on this to follow up on it because I'm sure people will be interested. So why should you train your dog? Every single day, I see owners with dogs that are not properly trained and it adds stress and anxiety to the owner's life, also to the dog's life. When you're out on walks, you see dogs pulling their owners, you see them reacting to another dog that's just casually walking by them. They react to the smallest things happening around in the world, and if you put yourself in the dog's position, that dog is not comfortable when they're reacting. They are stressed, they're highly anxious, there's a lot of buildup going on in their mind. As an owner, it is our responsibility to make sure our dog is living a healthy, happy life. And if they are constantly on a daily basis, reacting to the smallest things in a negative way, then it is our job to help them get past these obstacles until they reach a point where they are calm and well-behaved regularly. Where if the postman comes, they aren't barking aggressively, they aren't jumping around at the window, but instead they realize that this is something that just happens around them, and it's not something that they really need to worry about. When you don't teach your dog to handle all sorts of situations, it really reduces the amount of activities you can do with them comfortably together. I have flown with Riley in the cabin twice so far. First time was when I moved to San Diego from New Jersey, and the second time was when I attended a gaming tournament in Vancouver, and both times worked out really well. I had her down underneath the seat, and she stayed down there the whole time. No fuss, just quiet, sleeping, not making any noise, and that's really how it should be. While we were waiting in the airport, it was pretty much the same thing. I had her in a down while we were waiting at our gate, and nobody bothered us. Aside from flying with her, I have brought her on numerous road trips so far and stayed in a variety of Airbnbs, all of which she has never been familiar with, but she has done extremely well in all of these situations. When you train your dog with all of the foundation and structure, you get a dog that is reliable and always attentive to you. I do have to emphasize that the structure is the most important part of all of this training. Well, I'm excited to continue creating content for this channel and showcasing all sorts of commands or situations or scenarios that people often have questions on. Please feel free to reach out to me from the link in the description box below, which will lead to my blog and you can submit through the form to contact me. And I hope you have a fantastic day. Thank you for watching.